Rainbow Top Guns Season 3. Hello and welcome to Rainbow Top Guns. I'm your host, Shane Phillips. This is the third season of our program, which means you must really appreciate our show. So let me start with a big thank you to all our audience. Season one and season two were full of inspiring stories. Most of these were rags to riches, which means anybody can get rich with the right amount of focus, hard work, perseverance, a little luck, and being in the right place at the right time. United Arab Emirates and Dubai are definitely the right place, and the time is now. Presented by Nokia, inspired by Cadillac. We in the UAE value very much the Indian community in our midst and especially admire its top guns and there are quite a uh, few of them who we have great bonds with. Our uh, President, His Highness Sheikh Khalif bin Zayed Al Nahyan is himself our uh, a greatest entrepreneur, uh, embracing uh, change, uh, creativity, uh, and vitality, and inspiring our en entire nation. Hello and welcome, and a big thank you from the team of Top Guns. As we begin yet another season of inspiring success stories, I take this opportunity to appreciate your being there for us, for encouraging us. We feel privileged. Top Guns is a tribute to the spirit of Indian entrepreneurship and corporate leadership in this region. And in season three, we promise to bring you yet another set of stories to motivate us Indians to achieve greater heights. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be inspired. In this curtain raiser episode of Rainbow Top Guns, we've decided to get a little nostalgic and bring you the best of and lessons learned from season one and two. Mickey Jagtiani, the founder of the iconic Landmark Group, is one of the most famous success stories in all of Dubai. Here's one gentleman who really believes the delegation of authority is fundamental if you want to build a billion dollar empire. Mickey never wanted to run anything himself. He always believed that there were people who could do it better than him. I think I'm going to leave a legacy behind of young people who can really work and drive the business to the next generation. From humble beginnings, Mickey Jagtiani would walk some distance just to save money on bus fare. Today, he's credited with creating more millionaires than any other South Asian in Dubai. At the same time, he is a bona fide billionaire. My family went through some misfortune and we lost a lot of our money. We had no income, so to speak. I was in London and uh, with very little money, I remember I used to spend time walking from one bus stop to the other bus stop because I didn't have the money to cover it. I remember once I was in this building, I used to study in the bathroom because the bathroom was three times the size of my bedroom. I worked in a hotel. Uh, cleaning hotel rooms. Well, all these experiences count you to learning so much about life, doesn't it? Nobody plans the events that happen in life. It happens. And then you just take the best of it and move on. Whatever my life is till now is always circumstantial because I've never planned things as such. It happens because of what is happening around me. So is that the secret of your success? Gut feel, what is? I would say it's gut feel. Another very inspiring story from Rainbow Top Guns season one is the story of Yogesh Mehta, the founder of Petrochem, a true rags to riches story. I was in my worst financial state. So the easiest thing we did was I sold my wife's jewelry. 15th of March, 1990, 
for some reason I said I'll go to Dubai and make my fortune. The personal passion to succeed is the biggest driver. Yogesh Mehta's story is one of tenacity and hard work. Fortune favors the brave. He was at the right place at the right time and was willing to take the chances. In the Middle East, there was no mass chemical storage facilities, at least not the kind that Yogesh wanted to build. We built the business around our customers. What did the customers want? How could we serve them better? How quickly could we serve them? What credit could we give them? Could we understand their future needs? And the trick is in anticipating what your customer wants and serving them before they want it. And therein you create a value. And that value is dollars. That value is money. That value is profit. And of course, that's how we reach where we are. Season one also showed us the story of Rizwan Sajjan, the founder of Danu. Rizwan does not mind doing any kind of work. In fact, he taught us the dignity of labor. He has sold kites and firecrackers on the streets of Mumbai, worked in Kuwait during the war, and came to Dubai at half the salary. Today, he's a billionaire. When I was an eight-year-old child, he used to sell kites on the street. Then secondly, he did the job of distributing milk. He also distributed newspapers. He also started a small factory of files. So the business was always in his mind. I still remember he used to put up a stall of crackers and he would sell. He never had that feeling that I was selling. I used to shy off. But now I feel, oh my God, this man, what he was and now where he has reached. On my 18th birthday, when I received this letter from him, saying that, better you approached me for a job when you were 16. At that time, I could not offer you a job. Today, you are 18, and in case if you are still interested to come to Kuwait, I can give you a job. Lovely. I was so touched, as you can imagine. Because in India, in Bombay, when you have nothing, it's, it's not easy to make your career, it's not easy to make your living. You must have been so happy to get a job off from Kuwait. Absolutely, because you know, my father was not there, and yeah. Uh, I didn't know which direction to move around. Uh, there was nobody to uh, take care of uh, the family. Uh, uh, but uh, that was a silver thing which I saw. I went to Kuwait yeah. and uh, he offered me a job in Kuwait, uh, which was 150 dinars. I remember still the salary which I started with. 150 dinars was approximately 1,800 dirhams of Kuwait, uh, of Dubai, if you look at it today. I started working with him. Um, as a simple counter salesman. It was not the money which he, the job he gave me. He is the one who taught me how to make two plus two pie. All the stories in season one were gripping and inspiring. There are many lessons to learn from the spirit of Indian entrepreneurship and corporate leadership. Everybody has to struggle in life. After fighting nearly 10 years, 1971, Mr. Shah and he helped me and he made me Vasu Shroff. We were fortunate. We came to Dubai at the right time when Dubai was just taking off. Leadership comes in when you do the right things at the right time. In 1990, when we had the Iraqi invasion, a business that took 70 years to build was wiped out in two days. I also believe that every time there's a disaster or there's a crisis, there's new opportunity that comes up. So almost everyone is target market. And as a large business, we are very clear that our success depends on how successful the society is. 1991, when I was asked to come to Dubai, nobody would have thought Dubai would be a racing destination. Most things in life are in the head. If you're happy in the head, then everything else falls into place. The journey so far has been very challenging, but the future looks even bigger and brighter. My mother once told me that be good to the 10 people around you. That's where the God's blessing. That's where Allah's blessing.
As you can see, season one was hosted by my friend Anish Jagtiani. After the break, we'll do a recap of Rainbow Top Guns season two. So stay with us. My focus was completely on service. I didn't know visual merchandising. I had no idea of what retail is all about. I think so the customer taught me everything. If you stay the course and do the things right, the right things happen to you. That's, that's, that's what I tend to believe. Presented by Nokia, inspired by Cadillac.